So for us, we did have um, some concerns with Cooper and Bradley as they started getting into kindergarten and first grade and second grade and things. And, um, and, you know, keeping their attention was challenging Bradley more so than Cooper, but both of them still kind of like, it was pretty evident. Hey, Mom Nation, welcome to our From the Heart podcast, where we share inspirational stories, useful information, and we discuss a wide variety of women-related topics. While you're listening to this episode on your favorite podcast platform, please subscribe to our channel and rate us so that we can get this information out to the moms that need to hear it. If you'd like to join the conversation, we are at Mom Nation USA. That's our handle on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. We hope you enjoy the show. Hello everyone, this is Ryan Gilliam, Senior Mortgage Banker with Waterstone Mortgage. If you're looking to buy a new home or even refinance a current one, I'm able to help you find the best program and interest rate that fits your specific needs. You could call me anytime directly at phone number 480-635-3035 if you have any mortgage questions or if you're ready to get pre-approved for a new home purchase. Thank you. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of From the Heart, where we share inspirational stories and stories of women that have risen from the ashes, all of that kind of thing. And today we have, <laughs> we have Ashley. I just, I love your smile so much. And when she starts smiling, it just makes me giggle. Um, because Ashley and I have another little show that we do. If you're in the Mom Nation group, you're familiar with it, especially in, in Arizona. It's called What's What Wednesday. So I was just about to introduce her as my co-host, where she's just a guest on this show. There's so many darn shows. I'm like losing my mind, but I love it. So welcome, Ashley. Uh, I always make fun of her in What's What Wednesday because what do I say? You're a showaholic. <laughs> Something like that. So for all of you who don't know, when I was a little girl, I always wanted to be on the radio. And so that didn't end up being a career. So I figured, well, I'll just make my own radio. So here we are <laughs> on our radio station. She did it, people. <laughs> she did it. Well, well, anyway, today our topic is something that I know I share with a lot of other moms out there. I share it with Ashley and that is kiddos with ADHD. So just wanted to come on and kind of share a little bit about I'm going to ask Ashley to share a little bit about her story and you'll, you'll hear mine peppered in there as well, as we just kind of talk through what it's like to have kiddos that have this diagnosis. When did we learn about it? What do we do? That kind of thing. So, uh, back to you, Ash. Well, I have three boys. Many of you guys may know that some of you guys who aren't familiar with what's what Wednesday or don't know who I am. I have, an amazing 11 year old named Cooper. Um, my middle son, his name is Bradley. He's a, well, he's nine now. And then Joseph is four turning five in September. And, um, my two older boys, they're again, I'll just say they are amazing. I absolutely love and adore them. Um, but they are like, as opposite as can be in so many different ways. But when people see them next to each other, they're like mixing up their names all the time. Cause they're like, Oh, is that one Cooper? Is that one Brad? They do look a lot alike. I give them that. But as far as like, you know, their interests and their personalities, they are opposites and it's, it keeps it fresh. It keeps it interesting. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but their um, biological dad had uh, ADHD along with some other, um, mental health, um, issues. And, uh, I always kind of knew that there was a good chance that one of them or both of them, or even my youngest, I mean, ADHD is so common these days, you know, it, it's just, I don't, I have so many friends and family that, that, you know, have this in their home and it's not, something to be afraid of like it 
I, I, there is anxiety that comes with trying to figure out how to go about helping yourself or your kids if you yourself are diagnosed with it. And I think for a long time, I, you know, was, you know, when I was with their dad, my two oldest's dad, I was, well, you know, he's, he's done this, he's gone through this. If this comes to fruition that they have ADHD or ADD, then, you know, who better to help me with that than someone who's actually lived it? Yeah. And I just, I want to point something out, sorry to interrupt your story, but wanted to point something out is I, I think you're right. I think a lot of us are, are, you know, dealing with it at some sort of level uh, with our kiddos or, or our spouse, you know, myself included, my spouse was diagnosed also. Um, and I feel like it's probably always been around, right? And, you know, there's always been neurotypical and, and neurodiverse. I think we just know a lot more about it now than we ever did. And so it tends to be spoken about more. It is for sure. And I, I can't remember the name of the show, but there's these shows that my husband and I watch every so often that are, um, oh, maybe it's love on the spectrum. I think love on the spectrum was the one that kind of like opened my eyes to now my kids aren't autistic, but I mean, there's these different spectrums of, you know, these different developmental issues that, you know, we all have and like love on the spectrum watching that show. If you haven't watched it is the cutest show ever. I love it. Um, but they, you, you hear from some of these, especially like the older, uh, you know, older, uh, people that have come on there, they share their stories and then they come to like, I've dealt with this my whole life. I've been this way my whole life. And it wasn't until the more recent years as, you know, science has improved and all this data has come out and all the, you know, as we've progressed through learning about these different, you know, the, learning more about the spectrum and how wide it actually is and where it starts from here to here, you come to realize that there's people that aren't even diagnosed yet that do have these things, you know, these issues, these mental problems, and they're, they're, they're living with it. They're getting by, they're doing okay. And then there's or, these, or other, perhaps not, or perhaps not. Yeah. They might be on the other side of the spectrum. And so, um, there is anxiety with not knowing where you are. I think within that spectrum, that's probably just really natural. And, um, so for us, we did have, um, some concerns with Cooper and Bradley as they started getting into kindergarten and first grade and second grade and things. And, um, and, you know, keeping their attention was challenging Br Bradley more so than Cooper, but both of them still kind of like, it was pretty evident. Excuse me. This is the problem with drinking Dr. Pepper while you're on a show. Guys. <laughs> Don't recommend it. Now I've got the burps. <laughs> um, but yeah, we ended up like, you know, picking up on this between what we would see at home and what we would see at the school and what the teachers would give us as feedback. And, and so we're like, okay, well, let's, let's take the next step. And our next step was going to a um, psychologist uh, and having them both evaluated. Um, I don't know if I really need to drop names, but one of the places that we went to was redemption redemption psychology in Gilbert. And um it was a uh I mean they were really good about kind of easing us through the process, which was really nice. Um because Nick and I just I mean we're <laughs> we're clueless, you know. Right. No right. And it's a lot of information. Through. Yeah. Um so either they met with us, they gave us paperwork to where we would fill out a questionnaire on our, like our experiences at home. And then they gave us paperwork for the teachers to fill out with their experiences with them at school. And then um, from there, they took that back. They went through all of what's been given to them. And then they met with them individually and uh, kind of, you know, did their own evaluation from there. 
Um, but redemption, I don't know if this is like a across the board, all psychologists do this or what, but redemption did offer for us to do a QB test. Are you familiar with that? No. Um, so I actually have Bradley's here. So we did a QB test with Bradley because after they, you know, took took the paperwork from us and took the paperwork from the teacher and did their own evaluation. It was Bradley that stood out as more, you know, it, if Cooper has ADHD, it's on that lower end of the spectrum Mm -hmm. Um, and not very prevalent, at least for now. And so uh, they offered to do a QB test and basically it's like a diagnostic. Watch me on what's what Wednesday guys. I butcher fancy names. I butcher all the names. (laughs) So it's a diagnostic, I said it right, screening tool um, that basically provides an additional objective assessment, if you will, of, you know, where they fall on that spectrum. So it's a little strange because you see this thing that like goes on their head and it's literally reading their brain I don't know, waves. Waves, their brain, whatever. I can't, I, I'm sure he gave me the great explanation at the time, but this was honestly year. this was pre COVID. Um, so I'm a little fuzzy on most details, but um, it goes ahead and based on their age and their gender, it matches comparisons to assess their ability to concentrate and their Im- impulsivity. Um, and it, based like even their movement while they're just sitting there. And so it's running through these series of questions and um, like tests, but it's literally monitoring their brain while they're doing this test. Uh, So they did that. And then when I got the report, I mean, I don't know if you could see this, but it's like, you see all these scribbles Mm -hmm. and it's pretty like in depth as far as And I still like, I look at this now and I'm like, oh man, I'm glad he went through this with us when we were there because looking at it, it's, it's high tech and I don't know how to read it even now, but, um, they, they had different things that it wasn't just a, well, do you think he has it? Like, you know what I mean? It was, it was more in depth than that. And I appreciated the time that they took to do that with us. Um, so based on that, we basically got a yes, for sure. He has ADHD. Um, and then their suggestions um, were basically just going over options. Um, he w- The guy that helped us, the psychologist that helped us was, I mean, he didn't come across as like a, I don't know if this is a bad word. Yeah, bad way to say it, but he wasn't like trying to push medication on us, mm-hmm. which we appreciated, but he did go over a lot of, you know, what, um, data, I mean, he spit out all kinds of different, um, case studies and things to that nature to help us understand the difference between some of the other medications. And we did go ahead and, um, I don't think it was that first visit or the second visit, but eventually we did say yes to trying one and I want to say methylphenidite. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So, and honestly, when I, and on paper, I was like, okay. But when I heard the word Ritalin, I got like, it was a trigger for me um, because it was one that Sean had taken and it, he didn't do well with it. He might have um, been too old. I think that it's it's more yeah. for younger kids. And I think that that's um, one of the things that he, the psychologist had told us is, you know, there's a lot of things that could play into that. You know, here's the data on, you know, how many people it does help. And, uh, you know, depending on what other medications their dad was taking, like there's just a whole spiel of factors, right? So I took the trigger away and I, I was, you know, I wanted to be as open as I could, as far as making sure that, uh, we gave him a good starting point and, and it wasn't a lot, like it was a low dose and 
but with most of the medications, you start off low and then you have to increase over time. And so that too can be full of anxiety. I know it was the idea of that for me is, um, but some of the other options were also getting an IEP at, um, cause you, they have been going to public school for quite some time, um, and a 504 plan. Mm-hmm. Um, he, they had already been, uh, meeting with and talking with, um, the psychologist at their school, um, and the counselor at their school for other things. I don't want to say it like that, but we, you know, we've had some trauma in our, our past. And so right. during that time frame, they had already had a relationship developed with them. So they were very comfortable with talking with the counselor and talking with the psychologist there on campus. And so when we kind of went to them and said, Hey, they, you know, Bradley got evaluated. Yes. He has ADHD. We didn't really, when we start started learning more about the IEP, we didn't really want to um, go that route because the IEP and I'm sorry if I miss say anything, people are welcome to correct me if I'm wrong. But my understanding was that the IEP is something that's kind of like in their record, follows them going forward. And um, while I think if it comes to the that point where we feel like, okay, this really needs to be like locked in for college and high school and, you know, all the things, then um, maybe that's what we'll do, but we just wanted to start off kind of with steps, I guess. Um, so we went with a 504 plan, which is basically just kind of like, how would you describe it? Do you know what a 504 plan is? Yeah. Jax has one. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's basically like a, a blueprint or like a, a directive for the teachers who have them in, uh, or have him in their classroom that they can get at the beginning of the year that says, here's the best way to aid this child, knowing that he has, you know, X, Y, Z. And there's special arrangements in there and and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So we went with a 504 plan. We also started doing uh, Kumon learning, which for both boys was, I mean, that was awesome. Um, It was one-on-one time where they couldn't get that really at school unless it was, you know, outside of the classroom. And that's a math tutor. That's like a separate uh, business place that you can go. That's a math yeah. tutor, correct? It's a third party, um, third party tutoring. And they, it's kind of like their own program. Like I can't. Do, do they recognize the 504? Do they need that information while they're working with the kids? No. I mean, if they did, they didn't ask for that. Um Yeah, they didn't ask for that. And I would be surprised if they needed that because it's the way they they integrate the kids into doing the program is you're doing it one on one with that teacher until they start to pick up the skills to do it uh, on their own. Mm -hmm. And at that point, they come in and it's like a classroom setting, but they have it's like these packets that you work out of and they go in sequential See, sequential, <laughs> sequential, <laughs> is that right? Order. Um, and it kind of just like progresses them through the program. Um, so eventually, I mean, with that, the 504, the teachers having a better understanding on like what in the classroom really helps them, um, was huge. So our kids went to, have been going to a school where, We absolutely love it. I mean, we we've honestly felt like it was winning the lottery, getting them in there because it's not our home school. It's out of bounds for us. Hmm. Um, But they uh, the classrooms are very like there's couches, there's bathtubs with pillows, there's, you know, floor to ceiling books and crafts and like for an ADHD child, there's a lot of um, stimulation. Mm hmm and, um, and distractions. So I, I really appreciated getting this 504 plan when we did, um, because it helped with that. But then again, this experience kind of came right at the 
beginning of COVID for us. And so we um, kind of had everything come to a screeching halt. That Kumon Learning Center isn't even open anymore. So really? COVID they closed did down Kumons? Well, not all of them. There's, I think the closest one for us now would be in Gilbert. Um, but the one we were going to, which was Northeast area of the Valley that closed down, which was really a bummer. Cause I would have loved to have gotten Joseph into there too, give him mm-hmm. a history and everything. But, um, yeah, so, uh, I'm glad that the 504 plan was in place because it even, when we did go into, you know, lockdown, quarantine, whatever you want to call it, and we were online, they had uh, online teachers at one point that weren't even from their school. They were from different, you know, different schools trying to help go through all that madness that we all went through. I remember. And, yeah. And so have them already having that 504 in in place in the, you know, was nice because they understood like some of the stuff on there. Um, they could adjust the grading criteria to, so maybe if, you know, if there's a hundred questions and Bradley completed, you know, 75% of them, well, you grade based on what he did, not, you know, the whole thing, Got the you. Whole thing um, which is really helpful for a child that's, you know, they get super overwhelmed. Um, so yeah. we've been doing a lot of math. I've been tutoring him this summer so that he can be prepared for fourth grade. And um, I have to be very careful because I can't give him, do I even have a sheet? Yeah, it's buried. But uh, I'll give him a math sheet and there's like 20 math problems on each side. Mm-hmm. And he gets extremely overwhelmed if he thinks that I intend for him to complete both sides. Yeah. Even better if it's only one side. Better yet if it's only half of one side. <laughs> yeah. So the, and the thing with Bradley is he just looking at all of that, like if there's however many problems on it, they, and I'm guessing that's kind of what you're saying with um, Jack's looking at the questions and then seeing like, oh, I have to get through all of this. That right there just triggers the anxiety right from the start. Yep. And he shuts and right I- down. He hasn't even started reading it to see, oh, I can answer these. I know these like right. about how much they know. It's about getting past their own obstacles of, you know, honing in on, oh, okay, I get this. You know, just that first step is sometimes monstrumental. So you have to find different ways to motivate them. Um, the 504 plan was awesome because it kind of got the teachers right from the beginning thinking, okay, how do I get motivation for this kid mm-hmm. is, Hey, if you get X amount done, you get into a treasure box. Is it, uh, you know, we need to get this done so that we can go to recess. Is it, you know, and so they could kind of start thinking through what they can do. And we had obviously suggestions, um, but then, you know, some other things like uh, giving them extra time if they do need it, mm-hmm. like if they do need all of it completed, um, allotting that to them. Uh, and then positive reinforcement with Bradley is huge. Like if you're, if you're harping down on him for doing something that he shouldn't be doing, which I mean, we're, we all, we're all guilty of that. Um just most kids are going to respond uh better with positive reinforcement and positive you know congratulating them on the things that they have done right but with Bradley like it's almost you got to take it a step further you you need to almost you know kind of give that reinforcement after you know as soon as he turns in that piece of homework like this is awesome you did great here 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 this is, you know, I don't know. I'm, it just really is a huge thing for him. He loves attention. (laughs) The acknowledgement is huge and they need to be reminded. Um, what was I watching? There's, I've watched all sorts of things on YouTube as I know you do too. 
And mm -hmm. uh, there was a lady that I had been, uh, that I watched a bunch and she had a severe ADHD spouse and she was kind of talking about what it's like to be the spouse, you know, of an, a spouse of an ADHD person. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that was a big thing is that acknowledgement. No, we're okay. Like, even if there's no, say, trouble in the relationship, they still need to know okay, no, we're okay. okay. Everything's okay. You're okay. You know what I mean? And that is giant. And I see that in my, my two boys as well. Yeah, it is. It's, and I, uh, it's hard for Bradley because in the beginning of like, especially like in classroom settings or even with just social interactions period, like he's going to be reserved and shy and anxious before I mean, at least with school in a new classroom, it takes him, I, I, I mean, I don't know what it is for, you know, for kids without ADHD. I mean, I guess my closest would be Cooper. Um, Joseph is, I mean, that kid is just, I don't know. <laughs> he eats just a social butterfly from the beginning. So, um, but for Bradley, it takes a while and he has to kind of build that relationship and, uh, and then his impulsivity and those like anxiety triggers tend to, to lessen. Um, but at the same time, then he starts to get comfortable. And so then he's, you know, being silly, being boisterous, you know, being, being the funny kid. And, um, so it's always kind of like a balancing act of trying to like, I'm, I can't imagine what the teachers have to go through, yeah. you know, because uh, then they can get a, get carried away with that. Yeah. 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 And I've seen that with mine as well. He just gets kind of on a roll when he's having his sort of hyperactivity moments and it can get a little, especially the older that they get, it's harder to handle, you yeah. know? Um, and sometimes it's not in, in, in the best spots, uh, or places. Yeah. Well, and so, and Bradley specifically also, when we did the, um, the testing with the therapist, he didn't only get a ADHD diagnosis, but he also got, um, selective mutism, Oh, which was interesting. I mean, we knew that like, like I just said in the beginning, he's quiet reserved and but then as he gets comfortable, but I mean, again, that's, I feel like a lot of kids, right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess where the selective mutism comes into play is it's, they're literally anxiety ridden to the point where, uh, speaking in certain social situations, they're, um, just literally can't like, they can't get past, you know, that anxiety part of it. Um, and so anyway, that was something that came up in that. And, uh, it's, I don't know, he seems better mm -hmm. for the most part with that, but, um, so we tried the medication and we ended up, um, it was when they were both at home that we were trying it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, our experience it felt like he was doing, he, it felt like he did better controlling himself and, you know, redirectory or taking redirection, mm -hmm. um, when he was not on the medication and he kept saying he didn't like how it made him feel. And mm -hmm. so we pulled back off the medication and then, um, we basically, I mean, at at some point, I don't remember at what point, but at some point we kind of got into a groove and it started getting easier than what it was. Cause in the beginning, I will tell you, there was tears shed. It was miserable. Mm -hmm. We were, none of us were happy campers in the beginning. Um, and you know, it's, it was a very hard thing, but, um, we stopped the medication and then I don't know, it it's, we haven't tried it again and we're not completely saying we won't, but we need to feel like, Hey, we really need to do something. 
And we're not at that point. He seems to be doing so much better. Honestly, looking back with COVID, my kids went from, I don't want to go to school. Why do I have to do this? I don't want to do this. That There's like an obstinance that comes with ADHD too, where it's like, if they don't want to do something, they're not going to do it. You nope. know, it's true. And, um, so we had that and then COVID happened. And then after so much time has gone by, you know, now they're like, well, am I not going to be able to go to school? Do I never get to see my friends? Like mm -hmm. all these other stressors and anxieties, anxieties come into play. And then they're able to go back to school. I go like this, like it was a fast thing. It was not a fast thing. We all know that. Oh, yeah. But um, when they were able to go back to school, it was a whole totally different tone and narrative. Like they were like they were trying. They were like excited. It honestly gave us kind of it gave a fresh lease on. I was honestly contemplating on taking them in the before <laughs> I was taking thinking of taking them to like a homeless shelter and like, look this is like, this is what people can go through. You need to give yourself the best chance you can. This is what school can help you do. Like there's opportunities that come from having schooling and this is why we try hard. And, you know, I was contemplating taking them to go show them what, how hard things can be mm -hmm. and why we push so hard through school. And, um, and then yeah, COVID happened and we, they have a new outlook on school <laughs> and, and they've actually, you know, been trying since. So I, I hope that, I mean, I, I think everybody shares that hope, right? We don't want to have to put our kids on medication, right? but I'm not so closed minded as I was. It was not such a trigger as it used to be, but I do know that if, and when we have to go into that uh, mindset of figuring out what's going to work best, um, it is going to be trial and error. Yeah. Um, and, and there's different kinds too. There's like different types of medication and from, you know, my husband mostly takes care of this because he's got a lot of experience with it because he deals with it too. So he most, you know, he does the doctor's appointments and just kind of relays the information back and forth. We discuss what we want to do, blah, blah. Um, so, so he's more kind of at the forefront, uh, you know, going through these things with my kid. And he has shared with me that, you know, there's different types of, of medication out there and mm -hmm. that the doctors have said, look, it's kind of like a trial and error kind of thing, you know, like, like you mentioned. Um, and I totally agree. It's not, you know, we just recently got some meds for Jax because we were realizing that, I mean, you say tears, we were having tears and there's no reason for this kid to have tears. I mean, I realize we all have our own things and I'm not saying his life is perfect by any means, but really during, you know, these were basic sort of life functions and we shouldn't have been having tears through these things. And so, you know, Matt stopped me one day and he's like, you know, we really need to revisit because we got his diagnosis a year and a half ago. We really yeah. need to revisit the, you know, the, the medication thing. Let's just try it. See what happens. Doesn't have to be, you know, a permanent solution by any means, but let's see how he acts on it. He's going to be going into a new school this year. You know, maybe we can make this a little bit easier for him of a transition and make the whole learning thing easier for him. Because, you know, like you said, doesn't want to do something. He doesn't want to do it. And yeah. oftentimes that has to do with math. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, you got to learn why do I need this anyway? Oh, please. I use yeah. math every second of every day. Like you need this. Um, and so, you know, obviously, you know, my story, we were falling behind academically. I knew it. And that's why I pulled him out of public school earlier this year, brought him home. When I brought him home, I really realized what was going on. Um, and so we did get Ritalin as well, because uh, the way I understand it, that's kind of their initial go-to for younger kids. Like younger kids don't get on Adderall, for instance, Yeah, um, was how it was explained to me. And it is a very, very low dose. I absolutely hate the scientific name of it yeah. with a passion um, because I know how, let's be honest, how close it is to that bad drug. Um, however, it's controlled, obviously. And 
we gave him a half of a low dosage just to see. And we did it over the weekend just to see how it went for him and asked him, hey, you know, how do you feel? Do you feel anything different? Do you like, dislike, whatever? And he said, I'm excited. I'm happy. I don't feel um, I don't feel anxious. I feel calm. Um, I want to do I'm excited about doing math is what he said. Aww. And so he was like, I want to do it. And so far, um, he's been in camp yesterday and today was his, you know, first opportunity to be in camp with the meds. And I obviously don't know how today went because he's not home yet. But um, yeah. yesterday he said that it went really well and he had an easier time to, you know, focus on and do the things that he wanted to do. But he had an easier time doing it. And uh, so hopefully that ends up working out for him. And again, like I, I know it's not a permanent solution. I don't want it to be a permanent solution. I, I realized that, you know, I'm not one that just goes on the easy way anyway, and just is like, set it and forget it. Oh, that's over. I don't have to deal with it anymore. Um, I know that there's going to be lots of growth and, and lots of things that we still need to do to, you know, to help him, like you had mentioned, get on that path so that he can be a responsible citizen so that he can you know do the things that he needs to do to 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 be the adult that I know he wants to be yeah um you know what I mean and so that's that's kind of where we're at right now oh well I'm glad that he's having a good experience with it yeah Um, how is uh how is Matt going I mean obviously he's a bit more familiar with all of the process but how is he taking and what's his feedback with everything so far? Do you know? Yeah, absolutely. We've been talking about it every day just so that at all three of us, I call us the triangle. That's <laughs> my nickname for our family. Um, so when the triangle is together, which is on a daily basis, we have been talking about it just because I want him to share with me. So I, I want to be unbiased, right? And so I want him to share with me, hey, you know what? I really don't feel great if that's the case. Or, you know, I don't like how it makes me feel or whatever, if that's the case. I also want him to share the positive things. Um, So I'm just kind of keeping that communication line open and I'm just looking for feedback every day. Um, I'm a big pattern person. So once I start seeing patterns, like, you know, I like that data. Um, So, so far, so good. And, you know, I'm again, like, like, like you were saying, that wasn't my initial reaction. That was not my go-to. I'm like, okay, we have a diagnosis. We can work through this. We don't need the meds. That was like totally me. Yeah. Um, but I've kind of backed down just based just because of the pain that I see in this kid's face. Yeah. And, you know, he came to me and, and it was, it was so sad because you know him, he's, he's an absolute brilliant boy. And when he's able to focus, he's, does great with his math and his work and everything, but it's that focus that he doesn't have. And so it started to make him feel like he's not intelligent. Yeah. And because he's not able to finish as quickly as the other kids or whatever it is. And that started to really wear on his self-esteem. And I'm so glad that, you know, I hope he tells me everything. I don't know if he does or he doesn't. Um, But I'm so glad that we have that open line of communication so that he felt comfortable saying, Hey, you know, I don't, I don't feel smart. And I, and, and that was, and it was so sad and he was crying when he told me and I was just like, Oh baby, you're so smart. You're so amazing. Let's get over these obstacles. Let me help you. And so that was kind of the catalyst. Yeah. There's, um, so one of the things I remember after we had started the medication with Bradley was that he would, every so often say that his head was hurting. Hmm. Um, there's a, well, some of your phones, a lot of our phones have, you know, the health apps in pro like already programmed in there, mm-hmm. but there are other apps that you can, um, put, you know, download that yeah. you can keep track of how they're feeling so that seeing those patterns mm-hmm. and knowing, okay, what's, you know, when did this start? What is happening? I told you he was probably going to come. I say- knew he would. What's <laughs> up, my friend? <laughs> Hi. This is Joseph. Hi, Joseph. She knows him. I know him. Yep. We both know him. <laughs> All right. Bye. Um, <laughs> But there's apps that you can like, you know, put on and then kind of 
be able to see those patterns on how they're feeling and, and, and that's, I think really helpful, especially again, we didn't really get to this point, but had we, I would think that when we have to go to the psychologist and say, okay, you know, this is the patterns that we're seeing. Well, how often was that happening? You're not going to, there's so many things to keep track of. If you, if you have somewhere that you know, it's going to be, um, you know, that would be probably a really helpful thing for you guys. So I absolutely agree with that. And thank you for sharing that. I didn't realize that they had an app for that. There's an app for everything. Um, but the patterns are important. The data is important so that you can see the correlations, right? And you can begin to pinpoint things a bit better. If I felt like if I wasn't paying attention to that, I was doing him a disservice because we can't, let's face it, rely on my memory. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, to to do mama that. brain. Important. <laughs> Total mama brain. Like that is a thing, okay? When you get pregnant and you have a kid, mom brain's a thing. Google it. It has to do with gray matter or something like that. Um, either too much or too little or something. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember, <laughs> but it's totally a thing. Um, so anyway, so I appreciate you, Ash, coming on to talk about your experience. I hope that it is helpful to you other mamas out there that might just be embarking on this journey. Maybe you're not sure if this is something that's affecting your child, that test that Ashley got, um, I didn't realize that it was called the QB test. That's why I was like, no, nah, I don't know anything about that. We absolutely have that test. We absolutely okay. have those results. I, I recognized it from the little brain drawing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the but <script>. those, <laughs> yeah, but those are, those are helpful things. And again, just because you get a diagnosis doesn't mean that you have to, you know, move into medication right away. If that's something that you're not really desiring or unsure about. And you can take the opportunity to learn about it, to talk to some people um, that have gone through it, that have dealt with it. Um, you know, I was going to say Google it. Google can be scary, but definitely look up on YouTube because I well, have and there's been a lot of really good stuff. There's also a lot of um, specific Facebook groups that are like for I mean, there's ones for parents with ADHD. There's ones with kids with ADHD. There's I mean, so you know, yeah, getting a, a feedback from other people who've been there and experienced that. The other thing to keep in mind is that everyone's first steps might look different. Like, yeah, I agree. I, we, we knew that we may need to have medication. And so we just went straight to figuring out how to get with a psychologist and start that process. But other moms I've heard, you know, they'll go to the pediatrician, they'll talk with them, see like, you know, Sometimes depending on the pediatrician's office, they're able to kind of start that process or refer you, um, to someone who can, um, maybe even just starting at the school at that, you know, the counselor there and the psychologist there, not, you know, there's not one size fits all. So just, you know, kind of right. talk with your sources and, and reach out. And if you think that that's a concern, there is a lot of help out there. I agree. I feel like the school is, can be a huge help because mm -hmm. they've got your child for X amount of time. They've been through things like this. They've dealt with a lot of situations that are Teachers likely similar. Yeah. Huge advocates for knowing, I mean, they're, and that's as a parent, like, I mean, I'm, I had my kids at, I started being a mom at 20, 21. And I mean, we, we, I've heard you say this before on this show, it doesn't come with a, a guide, like a guidebook, you know, doesn't. <laughs> so we, we know nothing. Your best people to go to are those who are not so, I hate, I don't want to say the word industry, but the, the educator, educational, uh, advocates that are out there that are with your child every day are going to be huge assets in figuring out where the best place to start is. And if there are any concerns. Totally agree. A hundred percent. And getting the feedback from them and recording that data and looking at patterns. So, so important guys. Um, there's also, we, so we didn't go to what it sounds like you went to when you got your tests and things. We actually went to an ADHD clinic. It's not far from my house, to be honest. Um, and they did all the testing and, and all of that. And we, um, you know, still obviously are are seeing them or, or, you know, 
go to them uh, mm-hmm. for ongoing care. Does so, Matt go there too? What's that? Does Matt, do they take adults too? Yeah. Cool. yeah. It's a clinic specifically for it. So it's awesome. pretty cool. Um, but anyway, thank you so much, Ashley, for being with us. I appreciate it. Welcome. Thanks for asking. Of course, of course. And for those of you out there that, again, might be dealing with this, think think it's coming, might just be getting the journey. Maybe you're in the middle of the journey. Maybe, hey, maybe you're at the end of the journey, right? And you could teach us something. <laughs> Definitely comment below. Hopefully this helped you. Let us know if it did. Let us know if you'd like to see more discussion on this topic. Like I said, I know that a lot of moms are dealing with it. Like Ashley said at the beginning of the show, it seems like it's everywhere. Um, and 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 I I think it's always been everywhere. It's just we're kind of learning more about it now. We know more about it now. We know how to recognize it, work with it, that kind of thing. Um, in in the triangles household, we call my family the triangle. It is not a disability. It's an extra ability because they have unbelievable imaginations unbelievable creativity and really honestly when my son is on a roll and he's doing something that he loves to do he's just i mean his his focus and attention is unmatched yeah. and you get very passionate that's very sure. yeah it's incredible it's incredible so learning how to you know i think it's important that as parents we talk about it and we talk about it frequently and candidly and then that way we can learn tools from each other. We can learn processes, ways to deal with it from each other. I just thought of something, sorry. But another cool thing that I've been doing with the boys lately is watching a lot of TED Talks, especially ones where the speaker is very open about the fact that they have ADHD. There are so many role models out there or people that you know they or we look up to that have ADHD or have other mental health problems who talk out and speak about it. And when you look at their life experiences and the, your kids can see like, Oh, like, even if, even if like for Jax, if he's, you know, maybe not right now, but if he's been down on himself and feeling like, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not able to get through this that quickly. And he's, you know, um, just going through the emotions of feeling like he's inadequate somehow watching educational videos, Ted talks, motivational videos. Like my, I don't give my kids full access to YouTube, but you know, we're, we're picking and selecting these videos that we can watch with them. My boys, we watched one about um, neuro pathways and how to like make build not new ones we're we're born with all the neuro pathways that we ever need like that was a cool thing that they learned and um but as you learn something you're you know you're shooting that you're, you're pushing that whatever it is electricity whatever it is through that already built neuro pathway and it's meant for that you know what i mean like and so you're making it wider and i don't know it was just they're having fun learning that kind of stuff. And when Bradley specifically gets excited about these things, I'm like, yeah, bud. So this is why we practice, you know, all the things at school that we do. This is why we practice what we do for sports. Like, you know, we've always been hurt. They've always been told practice makes perfect, but that repetition is huge, especially for someone with ADHD, because the more that they do it, you know, the quicker they're able to kind of deep, compartmentalize and and get through that anxiety and, and yep. just go for it. So totally agree with you. Totally agree. We had this aha moment this morning. Every morning we do flashcards before he goes to camp because I want to get him better at math before he gets to fourth grade. Right. And, um, he was doing, so we were doing flashcards and then I give him like his sheet to do, like I had explained has the 20 problems on each side. And he was doing his sheet and he was getting through them. And he's like, oh, cause I, I just, I remember that answer. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, good, because memory is going to serve you. Just memorize it, buddy. Just memorize it. <laughs> yep. Um, well, okay. I will stop. I love you. Awesome. Thanks I love you me. too. And if, and, and I think there's more for us to talk about. And especially since we're going back to school, um, I specifically am sending my kiddo back with, you know, at this point, unless anything changes with a medication regimen. Um, So I think that we'll have a lot more to talk about here in a couple of months. 
So mm-hmm. maybe we'll have Ashley layer back for the same topic, uh, but different stuff. All right, guys. All right. If you are interested in checking out some of our other podcasts, some of our other shows. Ashley calls me the showaholic. She's she's right. I mean, it's the truth. Hop on over to our YouTube channel and you will see there's over 500 videos on there, guys. Very, very binge worthy. Lots of different topics that we chat about. Our handle is at Mom Nation USA on YouTube and across all of our social platforms. If you are more of the podcast type, maybe you, you run a lot, bike a lot, hike a lot, whatever it is, hop over to your favorite podcast platform, do a quick search for Mom Nation Talk Radio. And our our podcast channel works a lot different than others. Like there's usually like one show, right? That goes through that podcast channel, one topic, whatever. We have all of our shows, all of our topics that go through that one channel. So if you like, subscribe, notify, download, whatever it is that you do on your favorite podcast platform, you will be notified of every new show that we drop. And we hope you like it. Until next time. Bye.